Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Nigel here with part 21 of the Sherman build. Um, I'm going to start with a kind of apology, if you like, or could be an excuse. Sorry I didn't come up with a video for you yesterday. I've been extremely busy with other stuff, which you will see as time goes on. I'm also busy working on my Land Rover and as you're aware in the UK, the weather at the moment is absolutely gorgeous. So, don't really want to spend too much time sitting at the modelling bench, to be honest. Um, one good piece of news, today it is, what is it now? It's half past 12 and it's the 24th of April 2020. It's half past 12 lunchtime. Um, the Titanic upgrade set has just arrived, so I'll be doing a review of that later on for you. Um, but no, I haven't done a part of, uh, I did do a part of this yesterday or I believe the day before. Um, been extremely busy, as I say, and also I'm getting, at the moment, I'm getting a, a mountain of emails. Now, if you send me emails with questions or whatever, I'm going to try and reply to as many as I can. But obviously, I hope you understand that sitting in front of a computer replying to emails for an hour or two hours a day is pretty fruitless, really. Um, especially when some of the emails are, I mean, I've had some telling me that I waffle too much which I think is quite rude and I may well block you for it. Um, I've also had some telling me that they love the way I describe things and I'm like a breath of fresh air to them rather than just going along and saying blah 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 there you go it's job job done. So there's obviously opinions on both sides of the coin but you know there's no need to be rude about it guys. So yeah if, if you send me an email and you don't get a reply or the reply is a little short um, don't worry about it it's not me being off or anything it's just you know, sometimes you send an email and there's no reply. Um, if you send me an email and tell me I waffle too much, I can just reply and say, oh, do you really think so? Well, sorry then. What's the point in that? Um, or, you know, so I'm actually thinking about closing my email down because it's taken up so much of my time. It's just bloody ridiculous. Anyway, um, I want to get on with this. Stop waffling. You can see I've got it sat on a couple of aluminium blocks to protect these front fenders from being damaged. And what I want to do now is start adding some detail to the sides. Now I need to look at this metal plate, which is one thing. But for this video, I'm going to look at making the actual flanges for the fenders. Now, what you could do is completely cut these fenders off and then make some new ones out of, um, out of some brass plate or something. But then you'd have the problem with attaching them and they'd be brittle and stuff. So I'm going to actually just add some plastic card. Now we'll have in here, I'll use a rule for a pointer. There will be a flange in here with bolts going into the side of the hull and when you look at it in real life it's actually like a, an s-shaped section steel and there's three parts there's a rear a middle and a front and we've got a join you can see where there's two holes here closer together and two here so we've got a join in between those two so if you're doing this with me the measurements i've worked out are if you come between those two holes and mark a line there so they're not the same distance apart so mark a line between them and that'll be your split line and then the front your first hole is lined up with that hole there and then 14 28 and then these come five mil either side of the line or five mil back from this line and then just go back 14 mil equispaced and then the same here line up with that hole there 14 mil equispaced and it gives you the right number of holes for this flange here i've done it underneath so as not to get any pen on the hole because you get pen in the corner you might not get it out um, I've done this in red, so basically I've marked a line 5 mil either side of the actual join line <clears throat> and then 18 millimetres apart, front and back, gives you the right number of holes. Okay, so that's the way that works. So 18 millimetres for these holes that are going in the side and 14 millimetres for these holes that are going in the fenders. You will look at some photographs and you will see that these holes aren't there. I'm assuming they're from restoration projects because when you're actually restoring one of these it's probably easier to leave those holes out because like 95% of the pictures have got them in and sort of 5% don't and these holes would have been for bolting on the external um, armour or the plating over the tracks which you very rarely see other than on fireflies which weren't easy eights anyway. So I call this an easy eight, I know that's not correct guys but it's an easy eight hole and suspension as far as I'm concerned so that's why I call it an easy eight. So um, <clears throat> let's get on with doing some uh, drilling and cutting. This side here it's kind of it's a bit weird because it's not really thick enough this way but it's very thick this way 
so I don't really know what to do. I might either just sand it back to nothing and then add a piece of plastic strip along here with holes drilled in it, or just add a piece of plastic strip to this as it is and then drill drill through. It would probably be stronger to do the latter and have it to scale thick this way, which wouldn't be a problem, um, and then just drill through on the uh, on the glue line. So I think I might do that and then let the glue go hard. But um, I want to concentrate on this this side panel as well and get the proper um, the proper texture on there. So let's throw out some plastic strip and go from there. Right, so I've got the strips now. So these are the strips that are going to go along the outside. So I've decided to glue, I was going to glue something on the bottom. But I've decided to add a, add a strip to the outside. And what we'll do is we'll drill it first. That will save all the drilling afterwards when we've got all the glue and everything in there. So that's going to go in on like that. And then I've cut these here, and this is for the ends. So this is the, there's the join there, that's the rear piece. That's going to go in, sorry, in there on the hull like that. And then there's the front piece there on that end of it. And that'll go in like, like so. So we also need to drill the holes. So we also need to make sure we get the holes running down the middle of the strip. So what I've got, I've got my vernier caliper, digital caliper here. And I've got it set at 1.57, which is roughly half of what this is. This is like 3.2. So what I'll do is put my finger on one end. And then and what I'm doing is I'm hooking one leg into the side of the plastic strip. And I'm just scratching it along. And just making a line. And that way, the thing is, if you use a rule or anything, if you've got a bend in it like this, you'll end up with the, the, the line will follow the straight edge of the rule. But if you do something like this, you, you can have a curved shape and it will still follow the centroid of that of that part. Centroid being the right terminology, I believe. Um, so there you go. So we've got those marked out now. And then with this, these, these are, I've cut these from strip because I didn't have any two mil wide strip. I'm running low on my plastic um, strip supplies, so I'm going to have to get some ordered up I guess. Um, so there we are, so we'll put that, mark this at, I don't know, one mil. There we go, 1.01 .01, that'll do. And then all I've got to do is hold this end and go along like so. That went, that wandered off there, you've got to be careful of it wandering off. There we go. And what I'm going to do is come along here now this way and just remark that one where it wandered off. There we go. And this is literally just so that we can come along with a pin and mark our centres of our holes. You, you really want to don't go straight in with the drill with this line. You want to be marking them with a pin as you'll see me do now. sharp one that was quite sharp these these generally come with your own little knife sets it's just like a little scribing tool so basically we can pick up that line that we've just scratched and mark the center and you'll feel the line when you stroke across it like that now remember these bolt holes don't have to be perfect because in reality they probably weren't perfect anyway they would have been pretty good, but they wouldn't have been perfect, I doubt. I've got a 44 Ford GPW, which is like a Willys Jeep. And I can assure you the some of the pressings on that and the drillings and stuff, or the stampings they probably would have been, they aren't exactly precise. It's certainly not like a modern Japanese car, put it that way. And I say that because I believe the Japanese cars are probably the best cars in the world. Even though I don't own one. I think they're the best cars in the world quality wise. There we go. 
Did I mark that first one? Yes, I did. So as you can see, put fairly deep divots in here. And then we can come along and And the last one. As you can see, this is a good surefire way of getting the hole in the center. You just feel for the line, punch it in. There is actually one. Got, I haven't done these thick ones, have I? So I'll get those thick ones done off camera and then um, I'll come back and we'll do some drilling. And there we go. So I've drilled these. These are just drilled out 0.8. Uh, I've also got to deburr these and everything yet. Um, you're probably wondering why I've drilled these because they're going to have bolt heads in them. What I intend to do is put them on and then drill through again and then put pieces of hexagonal plastic sprue in to replicate the bolt heads as I don't have any aftermarket bolt heads to put on there. But um, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Now <clears throat> these here, as you can see, they're all drilled out. I've drilled these 1.2 because I'm figuring 1.2 times 16 is it's going to be like 20 mil. So that's about what size the holes would have been. So you can see here if we line up the red mark with the split mark here. So basically I've got these red marks. This is where the join is. So I'll cut them and then I'll put them together purposely, not perfectly level. Um, you can see straight away already that just gives such an improved look to the hull now that we've got this um you know this this strip on there with the holes so you know it's these tiny little bits and pieces that will just add so much to the model it's like these little things here and the little tying hooks on the front it just adds and adds and adds to the to the look of it and um you know basically what i'm trying to do here is have this so that if i have it stood on a shelf next to the pershing the pershing is like a proper 16th scale model really the couple of emissions but a lot of it is really good um, this is very very basic indeed so my idea is to have this stood next to that and this can stand its own ground as a scale model rather than just a toy and obviously the tiger with that full abra photo etch set which is just stupid um that will look completely different again so um i'll uh I'll look at getting all this done. I think first of all, what I'm going to do is go away and see about the how I'm going to come up with this hot rolled steel effect on here. But in the meantime, I'm going to get a review done on that Titanic set. All right, next day now. So um, I'm about to get this all back on the bench. In the meantime, I've done a Titanic review. So right, we've got to get this cast steel look. Not the cast steel, sorry, the um, the hot rolled steel look. So this this. This and this will all be hot rolled steel. So it will be like a, a sort of rough, if you don't know what I mean, have a look online. Hot rolled versus cold rolled. There are many, many images of, um, of the, the, what I'm talking about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this little tool again. And I haven't done this anywhere. So I'm going to practice on the sides first, low down. And if it goes wrong, I can always fill it. In fact, I'll do it high up because it'd be easier to fill and sand back. So what I'm going to do is with this tool on its lowest speed, I'm just going to basically come along. I've got a 0.5 um, round dental burr in here and I'm just going to go over the surface like this in irregular patterns and just scratch up the surface. Good, because from what I can see hair on there from what I can see, the actual finish you get with this, it's kind of dimpled, almost like it's been rusty and then painted over. Make sure you go right up to the edge as well. Okay, so we've got that dimply finish on there. So I'll turn that off and I'm going to take a 220 grit because I don't want anything too smooth. I'm just going to sand over that and I think that's exactly the finish we're looking for. So if you can see that there but we've got a kind of rough pitted 
textured looking and this sanding is kind of also doing, doing the same thing so let me get this whole side done and then we'll come back and see what it looks like okay so what I'm actually doing here, I just want to show you I've got this little patch here left to do I'm not actually the, the tool isn't running at the moment I'm not actually going in and scraping it along or anything I'm just and I'm not sort of doing this either I'm just literally dabbing it on like so what it's doing is just making tiny little indentations in the surface and it will sort of run away a little bit so it makes a little line make sure you get right to the edge I think that's worse than having all this lovely effect and the perfectly clean edge As you can see, I'm just dabbing it on. I'm not, I'm not running it around on the surface. And the idea is to just make tiny little pit marks, and most of them will disappear when it's sanded. There we go. So there's our rough. That's what it looks like out of the box, smooth and shiny. Now we've got this rough pitted surface. So I'm going to take this piece of 220 bit, just sand over it. Like so. And this is the first time I've done this, guys. I've never done this before. So I have done similar, but I never used a tool like this. And I've never done it on 16 scale. And there we go. That's what we want is that rough finish. We're not after polished plastic or anything. So now when we paint that, we will get the kind of, you can see in there, you can see in there the sort of finish we've got on the plastic and you can see the, the pit marks and the paint's going to fill some of that in. But um, if you look at some of the, um, <clears throat> the walk arounds, like on Prime Portal, you will see the effect we're after. And it does tend to vary from tank to tank. Some are smoother than others. So there we go. Now I've got to do the round the back. I also need to check if we need to do some flame cutting on the edges here. So uh, we can look at that as well. So I'm going to go around and get all the rest done. So I'll see you back in a minute. There we go, that's the front done. <clears throat> wow, a lot of work and now my hands aching. So, as I said before, just go over it now with some, I'm using a 220, I mean we could use a, a 100 grit, really, really coarse. And just go over it, keep it in the same direction. And try and keep it along the panel because it would have been rolled that way and you'd also get like lines in it, so. <clears throat> Now 
and like I say we're not after a perfectly neat clean finish we want something a bit sort of rough and ready and torn up remember when you paint it it's going to soften it so you might have come in with a coarse a coarse ish skinny stick here we go it's a blue one this is one of the floury skinny sticks you can get in there then like so just get in there get in there And there we go, make sure we get all the edges, make sure we get all the corners. Just sanding away a bit of that cast finish that they gave it in the factory. So now we can see, if I just remove the dust, you can see we've got that sort of rough pitted scratched finish and once that's painted that's going to look great. And this also applies to like the side of your tiger tank because it's the same thing, it's a rolled, it's a hot rolled steel and if you want to what you can do just in certain areas come in and just Put sort of some heavy bits in there. And then when you sand that, it will leave a, a deeper pit behind it because you also got those sort of areas of inclusions. It's basically when it's hot rolled, all the slag and the rubbish is coming out of the steel and all getting rolled back in and then as it cools it just breaks away and leaves the pitting behind um, and it's just it's just used where a, fin, you know, a, a nice finish isn't required and there you go so I'm going to go on and get the rest of this done but I think what we'll do is call it a day for this video that 100 grit is a bit coarse actually it leaves some heavy sanding marks so just go along with that and remove them Yeah, I think we'll call that a day for this video and then <clears throat> in the meantime off camera I can go on and get the rest done. There we go. And also we need to look at what we're going to do about the end of these plates as well. Okay, so I've done all that now, I've gone all around the sides, all around the back, all over the front, all done, all sanded back. We've got that finish that I was after. Um, as I say, if you go too mad and need, it's a bit deep, put some Mr. Surfacer on it, sand it back and it'll disappear. So uh, it's just a plastic model, you can deal with it. So I want to deal with these ends now, and I've looked at some reference pictures and it looks like they're not sort of as heavy as the, the, the German stuff. But there is definitely a sort of flame cut look to it. So what I've got on here now is a dental burr which has got a small taper on it. You could just use a, uh, a cylindrical one. But basically again on low speed, I come along here, I'm going to rest my finger on the side so that I can't go too deep. Okay and then just, just go along and I'm just going to vary the angle and just basically randomly go down it and give it a kind of just basically putting lines in it really and there we go and you've got a, a kind of rough look now if you want to go a bit deeper with it you can just go over it again perhaps go in a bit deeper in a few places The main thing is not to let the tool go sideways because you're trying to make grooves rather than rather than grinding the surface. As I say, it's nothing like the German stuff, so let's get you a close-up look at that. Okay, so that's the kind of look we're after on the end of that steel plate. You can see it here we've got the pitting of the of the hot rolled steel there. 
and then you've got the weld which I did before. So um, I'm going to go around and do the rest of them and I'm going to call that a day for this video. The other thing I think I might do is where these strips go on. These are the strips that bolt the, um, the fender on. I might put another strip behind and put weld beads along it because these are actually bolted to a strip that's welded to the hull and it's sort of, I don't know, three inches every foot or whatever. And there we go, all the edges are all done now. I've gone over and given it a, a sort of flame cut look. You can see there, if I can get it in the light, there's the look I've got there. So what I need to do now is take a, a pretty coarse sanding stick and just sort of rough up the corners because they won't have been sort of radiused, but they also won't have been perfect like these are. So I'm just going to randomly rough them up like that, just to sort of tear up the edge of it, to get rid of that nice sharp edge it's got. There we go. You can see there's what I've done. I've gone over it with Tamiya extra thin, and that's given it the. Um, that's given it the sort of breaking it down and soften it out, level it out, take away the hairiness, the fluffiness, and take, remove any burrs. You can see you get that kind of flame, flame cut look. Okay. So the next thing I need to look at is how we're going to do these strips on the side. Now I've got these pieces here, two mil wide, 0.5. It's probably a little bit thick, but hey, it's a radio control model. Will, will enhance things. And I could just glue that on there, but the thing is, in real life, this is actually, a, as I've said before, a metal sort of S-shaped section, which is bolted to a welded-on flange. So I've got some 2.5mm um, wide, 0.5mm strip here. So I'm thinking about gluing that to the hull, adding on the, the welds like it is every three inches like so and then we'll have the we'll have the two on there I think that'll look okay so I think what I'll do is go on and weld well, weld put a piece of this on here and it looks like the ends are square and they just overlap the the welds that are in there so what we'll do is just cut this cut this off like so mark it at least so cut that off like that just check the length that's perfect so we get another one we'll cut this one off to the same length As I say, it probably should be a bit thinner, really, but it probably would have been like six mil in real life, and this is sort of portraying it as eight mil. So, yeah. There we go. So that can sit on there like that. And then what we could do is take our extra thin and we'll glue it from underneath. And then just push it down into the corner. The reason I'm gluing it from underneath is so I don't get any glue marks on the work we've just done. Some more in there. There we go, so that's that on. And I'm just going to come along with a rule, just make sure it's all butted down. there like that. Okay so that's our stuff we got that's a weld bead along there now so we'll just do the other side. As you can 
can see I'm putting lots of glue in there because I want them to be strong. You can see some glue has come up there. Don't touch it and it'll disappear. If it's white then that's plastic oozing out but if it's just clear just leave it and it'll disappear. some more back here like so and then keeping the rule away from that area there I'm just going to butt it down and make sure that's down so now we need to let that dry a little while and then look at putting the, uh, these little welds on right so that's them marked out now I also forgot the fact I didn't notice some references these actually these have um, brakes in them that line up with the brakes in the actual track guards as well so I'm guessing that mean what they did that so that if one got ripped off it didn't rip the whole thing off it just split them up so I've, I've done some little cuts in there to uh, to represent those brakes uh, I've also marked out where I'm going to put the welds um, I've looked at reference photos and they seem to vary the amount of welds so I'm just going to put whatever I've just marked these up at 20 mil intervals so I'm going to use sprue to um, to simulate the welds, okay, and then really sort of wet it, wet it with some extra thin and play with it afterwards. This is Airfix plastic. I'm using Airfix plastic because it's very, very soft, as we all know. It's very, very flexible, as you can see. So I have had a go at doing this off camera. So I'm going to do this on camera for you now. And this is how we make thicker stretch sprue. So what I'm going to do is take the, the lighter here. This flame keeps going up and down, which is a bit of a pain. So there we go, wait for it to go floppy. And then I'm going to pull it. But I'm only going to pull it until it's thick. If I just keep pulling it, it'll go really thin and stringy, as you know. And then I'm going to grab it and pull there. And then I might be able to grab that. No, it's too, too dry now. But there we go, we've got some thin plastic now that we can use for our welds okay as it doesn't need to be perfect because after all we're going to just mash them up anyway so we can just heat this little piece here and make some more oh that's a bit hot so uh just pull that from there rather than pulling it from the end and then you'll get a thicker a thicker piece and just hold it let it dry and it should end up straightish there you go so we can cut that off of there so there's our bits of that's no good that there so there we go we've got some pieces here to play with anyway So, um, I've basically made these, like I've marked out 5 mil lengths, so I know that here is 10 mil, so if I, let's just get rid of that bit on the end there. So if I just cut this here, as I say, we're not after perfection, these are welds, they wouldn't have been absolutely perfect in length and spacing. They would have been somewhere handy, but they wouldn't have been perfect, and they would also probably have varied slightly in size. There we go. So there's our pieces there. So I'm going to just get some extra thin. Put some extra thin there. And then grab my tweezers. And put this there. Just let it sit. Another drop of extra thin there. Another drop there. And there we go. So there's a few. I'll do I'll do I'll finish these off. Oops. 
loops. And then I'll show you what I'm going to do with them afterwards. I think there's a piece there that's a little bit too far. I'm not going to use that one. Oops. One more. There we go. I just need one more to finish off this length. There we go. So, just go over them now with a drop of extra thin, nice big blob on each one. Right, I'll start from the front. And this will attack the plastic and get it all working. Get it all going nice and soft. Let's get this out of the way so you've got a clearer screen to look at. What I'm actually going to do, I'm going to use Mr. Cement. Deluxe because it's thicker and it's hotter, I think. I think it will sort of stay wet for longer and attack the plastic more vigorously. And then I can take my filling tool. spatula I use for filling and then I can mash this up and make it look like a weld. All right guys I've done all those now. Um, bit of a change of plan. I think these are a bit too big so what I'm going to do is let them dry off absolutely solid and then sand them down. I'm going to sand them down with a you know get in there with a skinny stick and just sand them down and get them more kind of like these are and then what I'm going to do is attack them with the, um, the extra thin and then just make them look like welds but I'll, I'll cover that in the next part. I think we'll call that a day for this part just to show you how this is all going to look you've got this strip here which is going to go on and this is going to be your your bolted on strip. So you can see now when you look in the light, oops, close up, you can see that we've got two strips and we'll have that one behind looking like it's welded on, and this one on the front looking like it's bolted to it, which is it's probably a bit too thick, but hey, it's better than having absolutely nothing there at all. Um, I've managed to glue that to that. <laughs> um, so it's better than having nothing there at all. Um, and it's just adding something to what is, you know, a very, very simple model, which you would expect for something this age. So there we go. Um, we'll call that a day for this one. So we've covered the, the texturing of the hot rolled steel. We've um, covered doing the ends and getting that sort of flame cutish look to the ends, which I think looks quite realistic there. We've done all this here. We're adding these strips on and uh, yeah, we're pretty much getting there now. I need to do some research to see if these plates here are actually the same as the sides and also these here whether they're cast. They're cast obviously because they've got that shape in them. They're cast obviously because they've got this all in there. But I'm not sure about here, here, here and here. So we'll have to look into that. Um, so watch back, watch this space and uh, look out for me for part 22. See you soon guys. Happy modelling. Stay safe.